Parkinsonism, which is also known as a paralysis agitans, is a disorder in which substantia nigra pars compacta, component of the basal ganglia, the neurons which are present here, the substantia nigra pars compacta, dopaminergic neurons, they get destroyed. And with the destruction of these dopaminergic neurons, what we get is a hypokinetic disorder very important term hypokinetic disorder known as Parkinson's disease. So to understand that how this Parkinsonism is occurring and what are the physiological basis of signs and symptoms of Parkinson's disease, we need to understand little bit basics about the basal ganglia circuit. So let us quickly see what is this basal ganglia circuit. So here this diagram is showing the cortex basal ganglia and thalamic cortex loop. So signals from uh, cortex actually stimulate the striatum and from there you see there are two pathways known as the direct pathway, indirect pathway which are going towards the thalamus. And then thalamus is having an excitatory connections with the cortex. So see the direct pathway what is happening that uh, striatum is basically inhibiting the globus pallidus internal segment and the globus pallidus interna is in turn inhibiting the thalamus. So basically there is inhibition of the inhibition okay globus pallidus interna is inhibiting the thalamus. So input from the striatum when it inhibits the globus pallidus interna it will not be able to inhibit the thalamus. And hence, thalamus will be able to send the excitatory signals towards the cortex. So, due to this direct pathway, signals to the cortex are facilitated. So, we say the direct pathway actually facilitates movement. On the other hand, if you see the indirect pathway, there are three negatives here, right? So, in the direct pathway, two negatives and two negatives make a positive. In the indirect pathway, three negatives. So basically, it, this indirect pathway actually inhibits movement. Direct pathway facilitates movement. Indirect pathway, II, inhibits the movement. Fine. Now you see the effect of the dopaminergic neurons which are coming from the substantia nigra pass compacta. Dopamine facilitates the direct pathway. Okay, so dopamine further facilitates the movement which is being caused by the direct pathway. And dopamine inhibits the indirect pathway. So by facilitating the direct pathway and inhibiting the indirect pathway, we said in, indirect pathway is for inhibiting movement. So dopamine is further inhibiting this indirect pathway. So this also will facilitate movement. In short, we can say that the role of dopamine is to facilitate the movement by facilitating the direct pathway and inhibiting the indirect pathway. Fine. Now let us come to the Parkinsonism feature. So what happens in Parkinsonism as we said before that these dopaminergic neurons are lost. So if these dopaminergic neurons are lost, dopamine will not be able to facilitate the movement. And if dopamine is not able to facilitate the movement, then this input from thalamus to the cortex is going to reduce, right? So the facilitatory signals to the cortex are going to reduce and this will lead to hypokinetic disorder or one of the features of Parkinsonism is akinesia. So there will be inability to initiate movement. So with this, let us see all the features of the Parkinsonism. So first feature as I said is akinesia that is the inability to initiate movement or there is bradykinesia also that is extreme slowness of movement that is what happens that uh, the person has inability to initiate the movement and uh, it requires a lot of mental effort from the patient that it concentrates a lot to initiate a movement and when he does initiate the movement is very slow so that is known as bradykinesia. Then there are other cardinal features of uh, Parkinson's disease them being uh, cog wheel rigidity cog wheel rigidity and there is resting tremor. So what are these uh, resting tremors? So what are these? Basically resting tremor is tremor in the resting state that means when there is no movement going on. In that case we see certain tremors and the characteristics of this, this tremors are that uh, 
they obviously occur in resting state movement is not going on and they have a frequency of 8 hertz approximately 8 cycles per second and why do they occur the exact reason is uh, not much known but they say that it is due to increased oscillations in the basal ganglia circuit so you see that it was a negative feedback uh, circuit which was operating in the basic one you saw right so there was a cortex then uh, to basal ganglia and basal ganglia was having inhibitory input to the thalamus and which was having an excitatory input to the cortex so because of this uh, negative feedback circuit when this is gone then there is increased oscillations in the circuit that leads to the resting tremors then what is this cog wheel rigidity cog wheel rigidity is that when we try to test the tone of the muscles uh, you might be knowing that tone is tested by passive movement of the muscles so when we try to test the tone by passive movement of the muscles the tone is interrupted in between like a cog wheel so in between it gives way in jerks that is known as cog wheel rigidity and why is cog wheel rigidity occurring this is because the differential effect of basal ganglia on the agonist muscle action and the antagonist muscle action actually you see the direct pathway and indirect pathway why do they exist they exist because uh, suppose the direct pathway will facilitate movement for the biceps contraction if we want to flex our muscles we want biceps to contract right so there will be biceps contraction on the other hand similarly we want the inhibition of other muscles right so for that we want the antagonist to be inhibited okay so this indirect pathway works there and it causes the inhibition of the antagonist contraction right so that is how the basal ganglia is helpful in facilitating movement so in basal ganglia disorder parkinsonism what happens that agonist is activated less okay and antagonist is inhibited less agonist is activated less and antagonist is inhibited less and that is the reason that we get cogwheel rigidity coming to other features the person has gait problem what gait problems he has he has something known as festinant gait festinant gait and he walks with shuffling steps why so see what happens we are telling that he is having a problem in initiation of the movement so because of that because of impaired initiation his trunk so let us just line diagram we'll make of body so suppose this is a leg and this is the trunk of the person right sorry for the bad drawing but like that his trunk bends, bends a little forward okay because of this center gravity you see bends little forward so he tries to catch up the center of uh, gravity because body has to balance isn't it so he tries to catch up with center of gravity by moving his legs fast so this type of posture while gait is known as festinant gait and this fast movement of steps is known as shuffling steps then there are other features that all because of the hypokinetic uh, disorder because of the akinesia there is masked faces that is lack of any facial expression masked faces there is a decrease arm swinging because he is not initiating any movements on his own right so lack of fidgety action what we do like when we are sitting some of other movement we are continuously making so there is lack of fidgety action as well right then one of the function of basal ganglia is scaling that means suppose if i am writing then how much the size of the letter should be right so that is a scaling now in this parkinsonism what happens that the writing becomes very small so that is known as micrographia because the scaling function of the basal ganglia is affected now these are all motor disorders but apart from these there are other features of basal ganglia which also develop over time and these include cognitive impairment okay so that is also important we should remember that basal ganglia doesn't mean parkinsonism doesn't mean that only there will be motor involvement there can be cognitive impairment dementia 
then uh, mood disorder will develop the person will have a uh, sleep difficulty okay so mood disorder then uh, sleep difficulty will be there and there will be certain autonomic disturbances as well because the pathology which is there it is affecting different sides of the brain so we get motor as well as non motor features in parkinsonism disease now let's see the treatment aspects what will be the physiological basis of treatment so we know that dopaminergic neurons have been destroyed so we need to increase the dopamine in the striatum right so what to do give the dopamine right but it is not given just like dopamine there is a formulation that is l dopa it is given as l dopa because this l dopa crosses the blood brain barrier and uh, in the brain it is converted to dopamine so that is first form of treatment l dopa then along with l dopa is added decarboxylase inhibitors decarboxylase inhibitors what it does is that uh, this decarboxylase inhibitor prevents the peripheral conversion of l dopa to dopamine so l dopa will not be converted to dopamine in periphery rather most of the l dopa crosses the blood brain barrier and there is converted to dopamine if decarboxylase inhibitor is added then next is dopamine agonist dopamine agonist basically are used in advanced phase of the disease where the person has lost the ability to synthesize store and release dopamine from l dopa so then dopamine agonist are given third is adding compt inhibitor cumt inhibitor to the l dopa treatment because uh, when this decarboxylase inhibitor is giving there is another pathway by which l dopa can be metabolized in the periphery so this compt inhibitor prevents that then fourth comes the mau b inhibitor monoamine oxidase b inhibitor and this prevents the cerebral degradation of dopamine understanding so this is preventing the peripheral degradation of l dopa okay l dopa then compt inhibitor also prevents the peripheral degradation of l dopa mau b inhibitor prevents the central degradation of dopamine so that more dopamine is available centrally so that is mau b inhibitor you see all the strategies are there to make dopamine available then fifth is use of anticholinergic drugs what are these anticholinergic drugs actually we have uh, not seen in the circuit of basal ganglia but uh, basal ganglia also has a uh, spiny neurons which release uh, acetylcholine and uh, they say that it is the balance between the acetylcholine and dopamine that uh, we get adequate functioning of the basal ganglia so these anticholinergic drugs basically restore this balance between the acetylcholine and dopamine and this is especially useful for patients who are having severe tremor so these anticholinergic drugs are used but uh, remember they are not used in old age so that's all for physiological basis of signs and symptoms and treatment of parkinsonism if you like the video do press the like button share the video with others and don't forget to subscribe to the channel physiology open thank you